next one is logical operators so logical operators are used to connect multiple conditional statements to make a single complex conditional statement and or x or not are some logical operators let me see a quick demo to see logical operators in action so we have named this demo as logical operators again for interest of time i have written this code beforehand and in first line i am trying to show and operator that is a logical operator for this operator to be true both the conditions should be true like both the conditions which are sitting on left hand side and right hand side both should be true to make this condition true so we should get a false out of this condition because this condition is true but this condition is not true so only one condition is true so we should get a false as expected and next is like uh, for or operator at least one condition should be true or it may be like both the conditions are true that is well and good but in case if one condition is true still our condition is true so we are getting true here and in case of x or only one condition should be true but not the both conditions should be true so please make a note like the difference between or and x or is that in case of or both the conditions can be true that is fine but in case of x or only one condition should be true to make the whole condition as true so in this case both the conditions are true so we should be getting a false because only one condition is expected to be true to make this condition true so as expected we are getting false next is like not operator so it just make the opposite of condition like this condition is true so it will make it as false so it just opposes the or it just invert the result so let me see yes false because this was true it has made this invert so false next is redirection operators so by default powershell sends the output of a command or expression to the powershell host means console but we can use redirection operators to send the output of a command or expression to a text file single angle bracket and double angle brackets are redirection operators single angle bracket is used to write the output to a file double angle bracket is used to append the output to a file let me see a quick demo so i have named this demo as redirection operators and in first line i am trying to run a fake command that is ping space fake host so if i run this command i will be getting some output on my console so i have get this output on my console as i told by default every command returns its output on console only so let me run second command or second line uh, that is like i am again pinging fake host but this time i am using angle bracket to send the output to a file that is sitting in this location and file name is refile.txt so please note in case my file doesn't exist already this operator will create the file as well for me so let me try to run this command and my this command is completed and if i try to check whether a file has been created or not or whether something has been written to that file or not so i can just open the file and check like uh, a file and i can see the output has been written to this file this time right so in this way we are getting our output in a file as expected so we are running next command that is like this time i'm appending the contents to a already existing file please make a note i am not replacing the contents but i am just appending the contents using double angle brackets fine so let me run this command and my command is complete and i should get a double line in the file this time so as you can see 
I have two lines in this file. One was written by a previous command and second one is written by this command. So we can use redirection operator in this way to write or to append the contents to a file. Next one is split and join operators. First we will discuss split operator and then we will discuss join operator. So now split operator. Split operator is used to divide one or more strings into substrings. While using split operator, we can define what should be the delimiter and how many maximum substrings we want to get as an output. In upper portion of the slide, we can see the box in which syntax is mentioned. Where we can see two parameters are there. One is string and second one is delimiter. White space is the default delimiter. For splitting a string, by default the delimiter is omitted from the results. But in case we are interested in getting the delimiter in results as well, we can put the delimiter in parentheses to preserve them. In case we want to define multiple delimiters, we can use square brackets to define multiple delimiters. Let's see a quick demo to see split operator in action. So I have named this demo as split operator and in first line I am using the syntax like split operator and then the string that I want to split. And we have one more syntax like I can define the string and then I can define the split operator and then I can define the delimiter. Okay, so let me run the first command and see how we can split this uh, string. As you can see, this split operator is splitting this string and by default the delimiter is space. And in next command, as we can see, like we are trying to split this string using delimiter comma means wherever there is a comma the string will be split from there. So let me run this and as you can see the string has been split using the delimiter comma and next is like if in case if you want to preserve the delimiter as well so we can enclose the delimiter in parentheses. Let me see like as you can see our delimiter has also been preserved in our output. So in case we want to define multiple delimiters, we can enclose them in square brackets. So let me see, like uh, we have multiple delimiters over here like uh, semicolon, comma, and we are using both of them as delimiter by defining in square bracket. Next is like uh, we are defining how many maximum substrings we should get in our output. Like if we run this and we are getting maximum two substrings in output like one is this one and second is this one. Fine. So delimiters are not counted as substring in output when deciding the maximum number of substrings in output. So in this way we can use split operator. Next one is join operator. The join operator combines a set of strings into a single string. The strings are appended to the resulting string in the same order that they appear in the command. In upper portion of the slide, we can see the box in which syntax is mentioned, where we can see two parameters. One is string and second one is delimiter. String specifies one or more strings that need to be joined. Delimiter specifies one or more characters placed between the joined strings. The default is no delimiter means we don't get any delimiter when strings are joined by default. Let's see a quick demo. So we have named this demo as join operator and in first line we are trying to join these strings. So let me try to join. You can see by default we don't get any delimiter so, but we have the option to define the delimiter. So in next example we are defining delimiter as space. So let me run this command and as you can see this time we are getting space in between strings. So please make a note of this syntax. In one syntax we are defining the join operator and 
defining the this string in brackets and in second syntax we are defining the string and then we are defining the join operator and then we are defining the delimiter next one is unary operators unary operators are used to increment or decrement variables we put unary operator before variable and after variable it is different and have different meanings first one will increment or decrement a variable and then it will perform the action on variable but later one will perform the action on variable and then it will increment or decrement the variable these operators play a very critical role in for loop we will be discussing for loop in detail in coming videos let's see a quick demo to see unary operator in action as usual i have named this demo something like unary operator and in first line i am just creating a variable and the name of variable is number and i am assigning a value of 100 to this variable so let me create this variable it has been created let me clear the console so if i try to return the value of this variable i can see it is 100 so now what i am doing is i am just trying to increment this variable fine so by default it increments by 1 so I have incremented this using plus plus operator that is unary operator or increment operator if I try to return the value of this variable I am getting 101 that is expected and in the same way if I use increment operator just before the variable like it has incremented the variable by 1 and it has returned 102 but the meaning is different like when we use this increment uh, or decrement operator in for loop it changes the meaning it, it changes the way my expression is executed in for loop so if i put plus plus or increment operator after the variable or if i put it before the variable it has different meanings so we will discuss this thing in more detail in coming videos when we will be discussing about for loop so for now we can just see how they works so in the same way if i try to decrement the variable i can decrement it using decrement operator and like this i can see it has been decremented to 101 again i am decreting it one more time and i can see it has been decremented by 1 and now my value is 100 again in this way i can use unary operators 